Hey, this is Writer's Row. I'm DC Wrighthammer, and I brought back a very special guest, and I'll let him introduce himself again. Hello, I'm Clarence Carter, the author of No Honor Among Thieves, The Blacktop Kings, and my latest collection of short stories called Shadows and Keyholes. And I brought Clarence back on the show. Last time we talked about writing short stories and a lot of the details around that. This time I want to talk marketing short stories. So let's say you've um, you've written your short story, you've gone to publish, you know, and you're looking to market your short story and how to get more people to read it, get it in more people's hands, get more reviews, things like that. So, um, you know, right off the bat, Clarence, tell us some things you've done to market short stories. Sure. Well, in today's technology, social media is probably the best angle to advertise anything, right? So obviously get into writers groups, get into Facebook groups, Twitter the writing community on Twitter is exceptional. Like I've never found a better group of writers ever. And I think if you find a home there, you're going to be just fine. So you find the group of writers, you know, ultimately we are looking for readers and now all writers, they are readers, but mm -hmm. you know, specifically trying to find book clubs or, or, anything like that like how do you how do you market to those people building the community is the first important thing you need to know your audience so if you write horror or you need to know who reads horror so you find those groups you know there are a lot of really cool book clubs in the world and a lot of them are just sitting around waiting for the next big thing the next stephen king the next joe hill the next whoever so if you know that that's what they're looking for, you just have to give it to them. Yep. And marketing novels for me, you know, I, I don't have the secret sauce because, uh, you know, I still have a day job. So uh, <laughs> writing hasn't taken off exactly, you know, perfectly. But I have found success, um, you know, sticking with it and, you know, putting out those social media ads. I've done a few of those over the years. Um, and what I, but what I've really found is you really get out of it what you put in. So if you really have a good marketing plan and you stick to it, you might not sell, you know, hundreds of copies, but you certainly can move books. How is that similar or maybe different with short stories? Well, when it comes to like magazines or anthologies, you already have sort of a built in audience. So mm -hmm. that, that publisher already has readers or if, unless they're brand new, they already have readers, they already have constituents who are waiting for their next release. So it's a built-in audience that helps you gain a following that you didn't know that you could have. So I always see short stories as like an ad for books. Okay. So if you, if you write a really good short story, usually they'll give you a bio or something in the end of the book, and they'll say, hey, this is his website, go check him out. And if they really <laughs> like your short story, it will lead to them going, hopefully, to your website and then buying one of your books. Yeah, that's interesting. The story itself is the ad. That, yeah. That's a pretty cool concept. And it kind of reminds me of like, you know, episodic short stories. You know, we think of short stories and we talked about this in the writing episode that they're shorter, characters are forgettable. Um, mm -hmm. But you could do like an episodic short story, which tells a greater, longer tale, you know, in short story chunks. Um, have you have you done anything like that, or have you seen anybody have success doing things like that? I have not seen it done that way. I have seen sort of episodic, like writing your novel one piece at a time on a website, and they'll pay mm -hmm. you to do it. Right, I've seen that. Which is, I, I did that once, and I didn't really like it. It wasn't okay. it wasn't what I hoped. Yeah, and obviously, you know that your yours is one experience there's probably people out there who have had success i mean those websites are still running um but but yeah i i was approached as well and the time commitment to do episodic you know stories short stories things like that and it was you know i think it was like three to seven thousand words so short stories yeah. uh, but it was something like one every two weeks and um the novel writer in me uh, tensed up when I saw like a timeline like that. And, um, it, you know, to some extent, I think I need to be pushed to do things like that. Um, and, and, but at the same time, I think 
there's something to that, especially with short stories, is you can write them more rapidly. You can release them. Um, you know, so let's let's talk a little bit about that. Should you know, should you release a short story for say a dollar, or should you group? You know, I know you did a group of short stories and you released it. You know, how does that look? You know, when when do you know you should release it as it's you know standalone versus let's do a bunch of short stories? Well, my if you're going to self-publish all of your work, I would recommend that you do a collection because mm -hmm. it it's more fulfilling rather than periodically dropping self-published works you have something you know tangible something in a book something that you can print and rather than it being ebook or whatever what have you but i would specifically recommend people who want to write short stories to go to the market to learn how to sell a story to a publisher for mm -hmm. anthologies and magazines because there's something to learn from that experience. Like, rejection is imperative to becoming a good writer. Like, you need to be told no. <laughs> you need to, you need to tell, be told, hey, you're doing this wrong. And it makes you learn faster. So by putting your stories out for publishers to read, you get a sense of where you are in your career and where your skill levels are. because. Whether you know it or not, you're surrounding yourself with a lot of people that are encouraging and they're nice, but they're probably being too nice. Okay. That's interesting. You, you've you just told the writer's row audience that one of the most excruciating things in writing is a good thing, and that is rejection, rejection letters, being told no, being told it's not good enough. Yes. Um, so that- I know. And that's, I know it's painful. Yeah. And that's key to marketing. Okay. Um, well, okay, so how do you bounce back? You you put a ton of effort into the short story, you've got it edited, you know, you you had other eyes on it, so you got your word economy down, you're ready to go. And you know, is it you know, talk us through the process of I guess querying and, and getting it out there. Okay. Um, so what we refer to as the market for short stories is just a collection of websites, right? You just check them periodically and see who's looking for what. So you, um, the websites are called like Submittable, Duotrope, and Submission Grinder, and there are a few other smaller ones, but those are the three major okay. ones. And you go on there and you look through, you can usually search it by genre, by whatever, and you go through the market and see who's looking for what. And then you see the length and you can put stories into the market after you've written them, but I promise you it's a lot harder to do it that way. Okay. It's a lot easier to see the submission and then write the story and then sell it rather nice. than the opposite. So, you know, I'm thinking of the romantic writer who gets a short story in their head and wants to run with it. From a marketing perspective, you're saying, look, if your goal, if your definition of success is to get published with a magazine or anthology or something like that, you're saying right to market, essentially. Right. Yeah. But I would always say that if you are so inclined to write that short story, no matter what it is, if if the muse is there, always write it. Right. If there's a, there's a story going around in your head, I'd say go for it and then try to pitch it. And if you can't sell it, put it in a collection. Okay. So yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, you know, don't, you know, write your story, but don't try to make a square peg fit in a round hole if right. there isn't a market for it. Absolutely. Uh, uh, and that is through the traditional route. There isn't a market traditionally. You can always create your, your square hole for your story by self-publishing. Um, and, you know, a lot of the, the viewers of the channel are, are self-published, are independent authors. Mm -hmm. um, so, how how do we balance it, right? We going to market sounds great, and going traditional sounds great. Doesn't work out. Um, we also don't want to say, oh, you can always just self-publish, and self-publish is this fallback plan or something like that. So, how do you balance the two? That is an excellent question, and I'm not sure I really have the answer. I've been sort of just feeling it out. You know, yep. if if you are flicking through these websites and you see something that's really something that you want to try, I'd say 
go for it, you know? And and in following the market and writing for market, you're also building a sort of muscle that you otherwise probably wouldn't be building. Yeah. So I think it is important to uh, to an extent to do it. I'm not saying, you know, put all of your time into doing just that. Yeah. But I think you should, if you're interested in getting better and, you know, introducing yourself to the traditional markets, you should try it out, you know, learn how it all works, follow the guidelines, really try your best. And also you'll meet some really cool people along the way. And I can't stress that enough. Like I've met so many interesting people through the submission process and through anthologies and stuff. And some of them just stick around with you and you never know when an opportunity will come up in the future because of those friendships and relationships. Fully agree. Networking is key. Yes. Um, just being able to bounce ideas off of other writers. Have you done this before? Have you done that? I mean, that's the whole purpose of the Writers Row channel <clears throat> is to spread that knowledge. I've learned so much um, because, you know, while I host the show, I know very little. Uh, that's why I bring people on and ask the tough questions. Um, that's but the I best appreciate, way to do it. Yeah. I appreciate your insight, uh, Clarence. I think this has been great. Uh, why don't you go ahead and pitch your latest book again, and we'll wrap it up. Uh, my latest book is a collection of short stories called Shadows and Keyholes. You guys can find it on Amazon or on my website, www.clarencecarterauthor.com. There'll be a link down below. Appreciate everybody watching, uh, and we will catch you all next time. Take care.